Here we are back in Train Sim World. This is just a video to show actually using the Warthog with track with Train Sim World. And this is related to my video where I showed how it works on all the engines. That video was to show how it works. This video is just kind of a demonstration of actually using it, not a lot of talking. Uh, kind of a boring video because I'm just going to drive a train, but I picked a switching scenario so there's a lot of switching of levers and moving forward and backward and all that kind of stuff. I have the SATEC here as well, but I'm not going to use it. Uh, plus another thing is I have track IR on, which I have another video that I've demonstrated track IR. So through most of the video, I will have that on as well. Uh, so we'll just go forth and do this. One of the things, first we let's get the engine set up. So I want to synchronize the levers. Okay. All right, levers are synchronized. Open the window so I can stick my head out and look around. So one of the things I like to do with Train Sim World when doing switching operations is to go to view with the three key and put the forward view right on the front of the engine like he's a brakeman hanging onto the front of the engine. And then the uh, three key view for the back of the train. I'll do the same thing for the back of the train like this is a brakeman hanging off of the engine and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Pull off the independent brake. Reverse her forward and let's go. So by doing this, I'm watching for switches to be set correctly. That one's correct. The next one is correct. Not all the switches are correct. So this is my way of switching switches. You could either do it with the map view, and we'll see coming up. We're going to get these engines here. We'll see coming up that one or two of the switches are, or that one, for example, is not correct. No, that one's correct. Next one is correct. It would be nice if Train Sim World actually added the ability to have <coughs> more than just the driver, the engineer, but instead to have also an avatar as a conductor and as a brakeman. So you can imagine that you might put the avatar for the brakeman on the edge of the train like this, hanging on as we're riding down the track and the conductor may be on the other end and then they would kind of be communicating with the engineer. Of course, you as the player, you're, you're driving the train in all cases, but if you could switch to the other avatars, then you could do what I'm going to kind of demonstrate here. Here, is this one set correctly? I don't think it is. It's a red flag. So here would be like the brakeman gets off the train, sets the switch, and then he would actually stay there, wait for the train to come by and hop back on. But because the view three always moves with the train, I was running back to the train and act like he's hanging on to the train. So we're going to get those cars over there. And one of these switches, I believe, is also incorrect. Actually, that one's fine. It's the next one that's wrong.
Yeah, this switch is wrong. Flip the switch. Back to the engine. So now the back guy can flip this switch. Just to confirm, this is where we're going. Turn the icons on. We're going to hook up to those cars. All right, so now we have some cars, so I'm going to flip the flap switch to the middle position for automatic brakes because we want to use the automatic brakes. So automatic brakes are off. Where are we going next? Stop at the location at the reverser point. So this time we're going way... out to here because we're going to go back down this track, I believe, next. And I haven't been doing things like, I guess, the light should be on. I didn't really think about that. Blow the horn a couple times when I'm moving. Which is good. Why do I like track IR and train sim world? Well, they put a lot of detail in this. It'd be nice to enjoy it. And sometimes you're going down the tracks and you got a moment to take a look to the left or the right. And there's something interesting out there, but if you don't have your hand on the mouse, you're not ready to go take a look. So track IR makes it second nature to just take a quick look and say, oh, that's pretty neat. I mean, if you don't care about what's outside the window, you might as well just be running Train Simulator, which is fine as well. But if you're playing Train Sim World, the eye candy is part of why we're here. And having head tracking to enjoy it, I think is a tragedy that they did not include it for Train Sim World. Hopefully they will include it soon, but like I said, the Track IR add-on that I'm using with FreePi at least gives the general idea of the functionality. It's just disappointing that I don't have the ability to turn my head or cock it sideways. In Train Sim World, I could actually 
move my head out the window. I'm sorry, in Trans Simulator. Sorry, I should be looking at the switches. Yeah, that switch is good. And the next one is not good. Oh, it is good. That's actually a bug in the software. The flags change color unexpectedly. So, for example, a train simulator, I would be able to just turn my head to the right and actually put it out the window but I'm using a button to do that here, whereas in Trans Simulator, I'd just be able to move my head and look out the window. So they don't have the six degrees of freedom here. They only have, I only have two degrees of freedom up, down, and left, right. So I hope they add it eventually because it really does, for those of us who have track IR, it really does make it that much more enjoyable. We should have gone far enough. I wonder if they're going to be picky if I can just stop right here. Nope. The scenario is going to be picky. It actually wants me to stop up there. Because by the map, we're going to go down that path. There's no need to go way up here, I don't think. We'll see. Maybe I've got it wrong. Oh. Not paying attention to my speed. So actually what happened there, I've mentioned in my other video that the Thrustmaster, because it is an access to key mapper, is only 99% accurate. What happened was the lever was all the way forward, but the throttle was in the one position. And so that confused things. And what I did was I took it and I moved it just a wiggle because I actually have it set so that every time I wiggle it at opposite ends of travel it will go D D D D D so for example if the throttle is all the way here I can get it back in sync quickly same thing the other way I can get it back in sync quickly it doesn't happen very often that I have to do that, but it does happen, so it's a perfect example of explaining that because I did not explain that in the previous video. So we're supposed to go stop at Cumberland East Yard E06. Okay. See, we didn't have to go way out here, but the marker wanted us to. First and rear, break off. I did this wrong. I should have had the uh, virtual brakeman at the other end of the train hanging on right here. So we're going to have to flip the second switch.
from where we're going to okay got it Looking up to those cars way out there. like this switch is not where we want it and I wasn't paying attention but that's fine the point is to actually show doing something with the Thrustmaster <coughs> so it gives me more opportunity to do that next switch is good now I'm just not paying attention at all So as anyone with a rail driver and train simulator knows, you have a lot more control of the train using actual levers than you do trying to use the keyboard to do this, or even an Xbox controller. Pushing buttons to move levers is imprecise. And admittedly, I'm not sure why people do it. Uh, well, I know the reason why, because People just want to have a little bit of fun, drop in a train, and play around in a train, which is completely fine. But when you add things like actual physical levers and the ability to look around with your head using track IR, it is that much better. And I'm not saying any of this to try and sell you on anything. Um, just more making the point that if you've got the money and you enjoy this, investing the money in some extra gear to make it work is well worth it. Sadly, right now, with Train Sim World, the rail simulator is not supported. I imagine they will add that, but when is a good question. Um, this is March of 2018, and I wouldn't be surprised if it takes the better part of the year for them to add it. Who knows? Maybe it'll come out next week. Maybe this is all just a waste of time on my part to do this with the Thrustmaster. The real question is, is are they going to add support for generic game controllers? Right now I'm not using my Satec Throttle Quadrant because adding a key map, access to key mapper for it to work is painful. I enjoy doing it with the Thrustmaster because the software for Thrustmaster is programming and I do programming. And I enjoy programming. It's great for me, but not necessarily great for everyone else. Um, but you can use what I've created and it should help you out. 
but if they would support generic game controllers, then you could buy one or two of these throttle quadrants from Satec, and you have all the levers you need to drive a train. And um, it doesn't have to be a Warthog, and these are only about 60 to 70 bucks a piece. And so you can get two of these for less than a rail driver. They have buttons in the front, and you can make up with the rest on the keyboard and do what you want. And uh, that's an effective an inexpensive solution to get there. But Train Sim World has to support generic game controllers, not just the rail driver. I've got nothing against the rail driver, driver I just don't have one. And I'm sh And the biggest point about all this is that if they added generic support for game controllers, the rail driver would be supported. So Hopefully you found this interesting to see there's that flag issue. It was red, it turned green, not because the switch flipped, but because that's actually a bug. Anyway, hopefully you've seen a little bit of the point about using different controllers and how convenient it is to have the ability to control an actual lever to do this with. And it doesn't take much to get to the point that it feels very natural and second nature. Again, as people with rail drivers will attest, they probably get used to their rail driver, and a lot of them are not happy about Train Sim World because it's not supported. And uh, so they're running Train Simulator, and they're not buying DLC for Train Sim World. So I hope that that will get resolved soon, and that we can use these extra capabilities in Train Sim World. All right, I'm just babbling now at this point, so I will end this. I think you get the idea. Questions or comments in the description, in, in the uh, comments section, of course. And uh, if you try out the Warthog or the Satec profiles that I have, and you have some suggestions, please let me know. Um, it's using target script programming, which is advanced above probably beyond most people who are interested in trying to do this but ask questions and I can help you out I can teach you or I can maybe just make the changes for you um, and hopefully you can enjoy this as much as I have all right thanks for watching bye